What's up everyone? Today we are talking about the Tokina 25-75 T2.9 Cine Lens. But first, if you're new to the channel, my name is Anson, and on this channel we talk about indie filmmaking, specifically budget gear, tutorials, and a behind the scenes look at the projects that I'm working on, whenever I have freaking time to work on those projects. So if that's something you're into, consider subscribing. Now first things first, you're watching this on Tuesday, but I'm recording this on Sunday, and tonight, If you know, you know, tonight is the return of CM Punk. It's clobbering time. Okay, wrestling nerddom out of the way. Today we are talking about the Tokina 25 to 75 T2.9. I do want to mention that Tokina did send this over to me to test, but as always, they're not requiring I say anything specifically, it's going to get my full and honest opinion. And as always, we are going to break this down by image quality, build quality, my overall thoughts, slash who I think it'd be useful for, and let's start with the image quality. Now, I only had this lens for about four full shooting days, and I didn't really have another project planned out, and I only had like a week to plan for it. So the footage you are gonna see is just some stuff shot around my house, but I'm actually gonna be using it for a larger documentary or a short documentary, but it's gonna be B-roll for that short documentary. So that's gonna give you some context on the footage that you're seeing. Now, something else to note to add character to the shot, I did use the Tokina Pearlescent 1 8 strength filter, uh, and so that's gonna add some blooming to the lights, but it shouldn't do a ton to the skin tones. But even with using that diffusion filter, I noticed that the lens was really sharp, but not overly sharp sharp, which is usually what you want from a cinema lens. Now the T2.9 does offer some decent low light performance. It's not something spectacular like a 1.8 or a T2 or something like that, but it will offer some low light performance. Something that stands out with this lens as well as its other counterparts, the 11 to 20 and the 50 to 135, is this is a power focal lens, which you can see in one of these shots because I started out doing more of an establishing shot with this B-roll and then I noticed I really liked the light and how it hit my white while she was sewing and so I quickly punched in on the focal length and you notice that it kept focus and now with that there is a slight negative and that's the fact that I felt like this lens did not have a good minimum focusing distance if you notice any close-up shots that's actually due to the fact that I put on some macro tubes with this lens just to kind of get again some more characteristic shots some unique shots and so the minimum focusing distance was not great which turned out to be a downside in some scenarios because I tried to get a different angle but the angle I was trying to get didn't have a ton of space and so it was a very tight quarters and I ended up having to hold the camera really weird to get that shot and just kind of turn the monitor I basically held the camera backwards to eliminate me from being behind the camera. I didn't have enough room for a tripod or anything like that, so I held the camera backwards, pointed my monitor around just to kind of make sure I got focused and just hope for the best. And so in that scenario, I really wish I had better minimum focusing distance so I could have stood there and got the shot that I needed. But depending on what you plan to use this lens for, it may be a good sacrifice to have the par focal side of things rather than the minimum focusing side of things. And so it really depends on personal taste which one is better off in that scenario. But overall optical performance of this lens was stellar. Just like the 11 to 20 and the 50 to 135, I was nothing but impressed on how well this lens performed optically. And so with that, let's go into build quality. This is a premium lens, so you shouldn't be surprised that the build quality is gonna to be top notch. Just like any cine lens, it does come with a manual aperture, zoom, and focus ring. And with that, the focus ring does offer a 300 degree focus throw. And so that range offers the ability to get more precise focusing. Now, the big thing about this lens is exactly that. It is huge. And so it is gonna be a little bit bigger than the 50 to 135, but again, with that, you're getting a lot of different focal lengths and it's at a T2.9 aperture. So that's the trade-off there is you're gonna have a lot of glass and there's a lot of things going on inside that premium cine housing. And so the trade-off of having all that optical performance in that cine housing is a nice trade-off, but no going into it it is going to be a lot of weight, and so you may look at something like an easy rig, or just simply keep it in mind if you do plan on doing any handheld shots. You may wanna tripod this lens and make sure you do have a lens support. So beyond image quality and build quality, what are my overall thoughts and who would I recommend this for? My overall thoughts is that if you are using the 11 to 20 and the 50 to 135, this is absolutely a perfect combo with those two lenses. And so if you already own those two lenses and you're looking for something in between, I said this in the review that I did for the 11 to 20 and the 50 to 135 that this would be the perfect complete setup and I do believe that. And on top of that, I'm always a fan of the 24 to 70 or 25 to 75 range 
because I feel like that's a good mid-size range. And so if you're looking at one lens to rent, I will not say buy right now, but if you're looking at one lens to rent for a project, I would look at this one. It is about $300 a week on lensrentals.com right now, and I do have a promotional code below that you can get 15% off that rental if you use Anton Co. 15 at checkout. And so keep that in mind, use that. Now, the reason I'm not saying go ahead and buy this lens is because it's a $5,000 lens. I get a lot of crap sometimes for bringing these lenses to you guys because I review budget gear and this is not a budget lens. And you're right, it's not a budget lens. And so I would absolutely recommend to rent this lens. I would only recommend to buy if you see yourself using it so much that the cost of buying the lens outweighs the cost of renting the lens multiple times. I really do think that if you're looking at a cine zoom lens, Lens, and you want an all around Cine Zoom lens, this is one to check out. If you have the budget, if you don't rent the lens, try it out. And then again, if you plan on using this on multiple projects, that's the only point where I may say it may be worth to buy this lens more than renting it if you plan on using it on multiple projects and accrue cost over time just by renting it. And so that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to give it a like. And if you're digging the overall content from the channel, consider subscribing. If you do have any more questions about this lens, let me know in the comments below. As always, thank you for joining. Go and find your journey. Go embrace life. Stay safe. Be happy. Support each other. Wash those hands, and I'll see you here next time. Peace. I choked a little bit. It's clobbering time.